Craig, you're there. Make sure all of our um, school board members are in first. So we've got three of us. Craig, you're on mute. It must start me on mute. Um, Richard, you're the moderator of this? Um, I am, but I'm gonna turn it over to John once he gets in. Based on your virtual classroom experience? Yeah. Cool. So this How's is working reused, for you? Good, good. We use, this is the platform. So all of us SMC professors were given the, the license to use the bigger package. So that's what we're using tonight. I'm gonna unmute John. Right. So everybody who's brought in is mute. Hey, hey, TJ. So basically, everybody is going to stay on mute, and we will control that because we're going to have multi, many, many participants in the meeting who won't be yes actively we'll participating all. in the meeting. And John, I'll make sure that I uh, keep everybody muted who should be muted. But sure. I just made yeah. you the co-host, and I'm making um, Ross the co-host right now. Let me know when that happens for you, please. Ross is the co-host. I don't see Dr. Drotty yet. Yeah, they've got to uh, get off campus. We're, we're going to be fine. I'm going to take a quick break. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Vanina. Can you hear me? No? Yes, Vanina. Oh, hi. We can hear you. Great. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me put my dog in my bedroom. I'll be right back. Sarah, do you know who should be unmuted? Like our staff, you, you want to go through and identify the people, the district office persons I just made you co-host so you can un, because we want to make sure that um, the public is muted. I don't know all of our staff people who would possibly be invited to this tonight. Do you want me to unmute everyone now or when they want to speak? It might be easier if everybody who's on staff and the board is unmuted so that our visual of who's muted is those persons who shouldn't have access to the public microphone. So board members and executive cabinet, you will be unmuted. And you'll need to say that again. You are on mute right now, I think. Maria just uh, wrote to us and said that her power just went out. Yeah, the power went off in the district offices for about five minutes and came back on. Or about two minutes and came back on. It's going to be a board meeting. John, I'll be back before the yes. meeting starts. John? Yes. For visuals, we thought that all board members and all staff should have theirs on. Um, unmuted the whole time that way for visually when we look to the participants on the right okay. we know that um who to make sure stays muted so we want all of our people to be unmuted right and then uh john will you make sure just to remind people that everything is being recorded yes so wait so maria can't get on here and i don't see oscar or rep yeah, I don't think so. I think we have lori now what is that ticking sound? I don't know. <laughs> right, we need to make sure that everybody is muted because I'm going to be going nuts by the ticking. But that's what I'm saying. Someone has to just fix that ticking and stop it because um, it's going to be hard to make sure that. Well, go through and see who's not muted. Uh, who is ticking? Who's Shannon Clark Rivera? I don't know. I just muted her and now the ticking went away. Yeah. Oh. So that's what I mean. We're gonna have to make sure that the public is muted. That's what I'm yeah. saying that visually, if our staff is unmuted, it'll just be easy to see. Correct. Bonita, to... I'm gonna keep you muted until we get to the public comments section. So right now we have myself, John Keane, 
we have Sarah, Larry, and Ben, and Craig, Dr. Kelly, Ralph Metcher is on. I don't know if that, where are you, Ralph? I'm here. Oh, good. Um, there's a raise hand button here. Is that, can we, who would see that? Yes, I will see that. So we'll tell, if board members want to get in the queue, that's the easiest way is hit the raise hand button. Right, so everybody, if you put, hit the participants, it's down, in, down at the bottom in the middle. It'll show you all the, all the participants. You can mute what? yourself, and then there's a raise hand. Oh. <clears throat> I see the, the good news is that. Oh, I see raise hand, good. So I'm in the gallery view. <laughs> who will see at the top of the gallery will be those who are unmuted. So we want all of our staff and all of our board members to be unmuted. Okay. That way we can manage who is to, to be To be muted. You want no. to unmuted. Unmuted. And then if I go like that, John, you saw him. Yeah, then my hand shows up. I got you. Okay. But you want us to stay live, so voice live. Because, Ralph, that way we can make sure the persons and the public are muted. I'm visually, so I made Sarah and Dr. Trotti and John, our president, they have the, the co-host capabilities. But mm -hmm. visually, when you look to the right on the participants, there's 30 people in the room now. Right. We can um, know who should be able to you know, speak and not. And then everybody has to be reminded that this is being recorded for um, City TV right now. All seven board members look like they're logged yeah, in. Yeah, I'm, I'm on. I'm on. I got electricity. Yeah. Where are you? Still couldn't get video. I'm sorry. Still couldn't get the video thing on. Where's Oscar? Oscar's there. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Everybody? Let's see, where are you? Where's Maria? On. I'm here. Maria. Oh, Maria. Oh, awesome. here. Hey, let's 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 call this meeting to order right on time at 5 30. Okay. I do want to point out that when we are remote, we tend to be on time. Uh, roll call. Uh, Dr. Filter Jessman? Here. Is here. Craig Foster? Here. Lori Lieberman? Here. Ralph Metcher? Here. I see Oscar De La Torre. Here. And Maria Leon Vasquez. Here. Great. All seven board members are here. That is our roll call. We will do the pledge. Me I'll, I'll lead the pledge. pledge. We have a student board member here. Uh, do we have any student board members Mia present? Mia I see Mia Wachtel. Mia Wachtel is here. I don't know if um, uh, Kimya or Ashlyn are here yet. I when can text here, them we will both announce right now. It. Hmm? I can text them both right now and see if they can join. Great. Okay. So that will do the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would find a flag somewhere in your heart, cover your heart, stand, and repeat after me. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, justice, and Wonderful. Um, approval of the agenda. We'd like to, like to suggest some changes to the agenda today before we approve it which would be, we are not, we would not do um, item D, Board of Education Commendation Recognition. Um, we can read that commendation out loud, but that, that uh, student will not be with us here tonight, obviously, but we can recognize that out loud. We will not be, um, there will be no study session and there will be no major action item. So yeah, we can we just postpone the, the student? Uh, I told him that we were going to postpone it to another Okay, then we will, we, will, we will recognize him at a better time. This, there's too much. So the goal of this night was just to focus on the immediate business of the district right now. So I'd like to move ahead with the agenda without the commendation, without the study session, and without the major action item. So moved. So moved by Richard. Is there a second? Second. By Oscar. So all in favor of the amended agenda? Aye. 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 Aye, Maria. <laughs> it's funny, it lights up, I know who it is. So, okay, great. So the agenda has been amended to reflect that. We have two items to report out from closed session. We have a final settlement agreement, DN 1011-1920. Kindly note that the summary of the settlement is as follows. The district agrees to reimburse parents for compensatory education not to exceed $74,000. The district shall pay reasonable attorney fees not to exceed $6,000. We have a second uh, final settlement agreement, DN 1010-1920. 
Kindly note that the summary of the settlement is as follows. The district, oh, sorry, the first settlement that we just did was motion was made by uh, Mr. Metcher, seconded by Mr. De La Torre, and that was a seven to nothing vote. Second settlement, DN 1010, district agrees to fund IEE and psychoeducation. The district agrees to provide 220 hours of after school tutoring by a district special education teacher. The district shall pay reasonable attorney fees not to exceed $6,000. This motion was made by uh, Richard Trevilder and Jesswin, seconded by Craig Foster. Uh, it was six in favor, zero opposed. Uh, Maria and Land Vasquez had not joined us yet. It was absent for that vote. That is all for closed session. Oh, I was there. Oh, you were there for the, the first one? Yeah, I was there for the vote for the first one. Just I, that I, I, was, I, was, I had an unmuted vote, but oh, I was there for both. Yeah. All okay, right, then I, I got missed. I came in when you were, when you were talking about it, yeah. So let the record reflect that that was a 7-0 vote, uh, and Ms. Land Vasquez did get her vote in for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, which brings us to um, our superintendent's report. Oh, sorry, approval of the minutes. We have one set of minutes to approve. Anybody have any comments on them? I move the minutes. Moved, moved by Dr. Fielder and Jesswin, seconded by Craig Foster. All in favor of approval of the minutes? Aye. 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 Wonderful. Anybody opposed? Aye. That opposed, Oscar? Oscar, you're an aye, right? Aye. Okay, great. All, so the minutes are approved 7 seven zero. Now, now that brings us to our superintendent's reports. Dr. Dradi. Yes, uh, I just wanted, to, I'll, I'll keep it short, but I wanted to just speak to the community just around the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, we are in some unprecedented times uh, with COVID-19 uh, uh, pan, uh, pandemic. Uh, things have drastically changed in our, in our lives and social order. And, and things are pretty much turned upside down right now. Um, I want to just say to the community that we must all honor what has been asked of us uh, in, in, in curbing the spread of the virus. Uh, our district is following suit with that, following with those recommendations. And we are working diligently just to make sure that our students are, are continuing their education. Um, uh, and of course, we are doing this remotely. Um, the people uh, that need to come in to make sure that things are still operating uh, come in at sporadic times, uh, but we try our best to limit uh, people congregating uh, at sites or even in the district. So I think the staff has responded honorably. Uh, the teachers are just hearing from principals, uh, which I meet with in a, a frequently, and the division leaders say that the teachers and classified staff and everybody's really jumping in and supporting uh, the students. Uh, we're all in a learning curve right now. Um, we're, we're trying to best to understand what's working and what's not working. Uh, and uh, each day as we hear reports of what's working well, what's not working well, uh, we're gathering information and, and we'll continue to try to make sure that we assimilate the information and come up with protocols and processes to help our, uh, help our cause, which is educating our students while making sure that we, we're seen to their welfare. Uh, I feel for our seniors because this is the senior year. You know, I have a son that's a senior. I see him every day. So I, I see how frustrating this thing is. Uh, with activities that he was planning, he really looked uh, uh, towards seeing in the last year. And I, and I say that because I know there's thousands and thousands and millions of other um, uh, seniors probably feeling the same way. So we're monitoring those things. We're continuing to communicate to the public about what, how we're going to address those issues. And um, I'm in constant, uh, in the daily communication with the LA County Office of Education with 80 other superintendents and we're paying close attention to uh, what's happening in the schools across the state of California and what, what regulations are coming down our way to, um, uh, to help us uh, move forward. Um, um, so uh, right now, everybody knows that we have said that we're closed past spring break, uh, but we'll make sure that we notify people ahead of time that we need to extend that. And, and, um, and, and I, just based on what I'm seeing, uh, from what I'm hearing from state of California, we probably will have to extend, extend it. And if that's the case, then we're going to continue to work on how we educate it. Um, with that said, more information will be coming out uh, this week or, or over the weekend about what we've learned and what, how we're going to improve. Uh, we know this for sure, though. Uh, students, students that have access to uh, computers and digital devices, uh, our way of delivering instruction is more efficient. Uh, but we also know that our students, we have students that do not have access to uh, 
uh, digital uh, devices. So we're in a process of gathering information on who has a digital device, who doesn't. And, uh, and I think for parents out there, when, when you see the surveys coming to you, uh, I know secondary has a survey out there asking who, who has access to a digital device. The elementary is coming out, I believe this week or early next week. And we just need to gather information uh, as to who has devices. And we also believe we have the capability of getting a device to everyone's hands. Uh, whether that be through working with PTAs who have been very generous and offering up their support and also other families who have said they have more than one device at home that they can share. So with a culmination of what we have in the district with uh, the PTAs and different people, we think we can get a digital device to everyone once we know who does not have one. And I think we'll continue to uh, utilize that to help enhance our education. Um, well, that concludes the superintendent's report, and more will come out, I'm sure, in, 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 recent, in recent times. In, in the future. Great. Thank you very much, Ben. Whoever, okay, so folks, we are all, we're all learning this as we go along, and I am not kidding you right now, a Jehovah's Witness is about to knock on my door. So that's why you hear my dog in the background going crazy, my dog is, door is being knocked on. If you are not if you are not a member of the school board I, or a staff member of SMMUSD, please turn your, your settings on mute because I can hear background noise and it's going to be very frustrating if we hear the noise in somebody's house while we're trying to conduct a meeting. So please check your settings and make sure you're on mute. And if you are not on mute, please do so until it's, your, until it's time to speak. Wonderful. Uh, board members, are there any comments or questions for Dr. Drotty after that report? I can see all of you if you want to raise your hands and, or chime in. All right, I'm going to ask one question. So Dr. Drotty, uh, I know we've had a survey out for the, the high schools, yeah. and I know we're going to do some more work coming up to make sure that elementaries get covered. I just want to really encourage us to be in, to, if principals can be in contact with teachers, the teachers in elementary school know their students better than anybody else, and they can give us a huge running head start on that. I just really encourage us to get our teachers all on board with that, with our principals on our sites, to identify families who might need free Wi-Fi, who might need a laptop or a Chromebook or whatever, a device. Absolutely. So, thank you very much. Any other board members, any comments? Or, yeah, uh, uh, Richard and Lori. And Ralph. And then Ralph. Richard, Lori, Ralph. And Maria. And Maria. Dr. Karate, um, I don't expect you to answer this tonight, but I would like it if you could um, include in our Friday packet and then be prepared to address um, the next time we're in public session, um, the use of, um, of vehicles like the one we're on tonight, Zoom. Um, and I heard you just say that from what you're hearing, your uh, belief is that you may be recommending to the school board an extension of uh, remote learning beyond the April 17 or 20th that we've already authorized as a school board. That being said, I think we're going to want to know about uh, how learning is going to continue beyond that point in time. And I think that there are quite a few um, colleges, universities, and school districts. I think, in fact, Santa Barbara Unified might be utilizing a uh, Zoom. So it would be great um, if, in conjunction with um, teacher leaders with Sarah Braff, um, if you could report to us um, in our Friday memo and let us know where we're headed and what it would mean to be able to get this kind of platform for the entire district. Thank you. Absolutely. I have not talked to the Paramount, but I do know that at least in the past, they have been working with Paramount and Santa Barbara Unified on their Zoom Ralph, that's Linda. Yeah, Linda got it. I'll go get it. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Matt. Or, hey, Ralph, you can just mute yourself. That's good. I muted him. Okay. All right. Let's go to Lori and then Ralph Maria. I was just going to add for Ben um, and really for the public that it's clear that things are going to continue to evolve and that people have all kinds of questions now and there will continue to be more. And so I just want to say that I know Ben, as the superintendent, will be working non-stop with staff and others to post um, updates, answers to questions that we all see swirling around and pass on to him 
Um, and so I just want to just reassure us that even though none of us really know what we're doing, or most of us with the technology yet, you know, we're, I think, limping along well, given the circumstances, and we'll continue to do so. And really, I want everyone out there to feel that Dr. Drotty is working nonstop with staff and with the board um, to continue to put answers out to all your questions and to so for the public, they can continue to send emails. Um, I don't know how the phones are working at the district, <laughs> probably not too well. But you know, I just want to reassure people out there that we know everybody's going through very difficult times. And in terms of anything that, this, and that is within the school district's purview, I think Dr. Drotty and his staff are on it and will be trying to get you answers. Um, so look forward to letters, emails, links on the website, share with people who you know who might not have access to those things and to the, all the earlier questions about digital access. That's key, obviously, and we are very, all very concerned with those who don't have it. But um, I just wanted to make all of that clear on Ken's behalf. <laughs> right, thanks, Marie. So, uh, Ralph and then Maria. Um, yeah, just, uh, I guess one more focus on the um, the digital divide um, and getting that information. And then technically, you know, there are the two weeks of, of spring break. So I hope that that's time that we will utilize to, um, you know, have staff working in, and utilize it to provide devices and, and get people hooked up. There are a lot, it's one thing to provide them the a device to use. It, there are people who don't have access you know, to the web and be able to to, um, to then use it. And there are, and I know some companies that are offering uh, free service. So we should make sure we know who, who those are and, and even start right now, you know, coordinating that and I'll get that. So I, I guess, um, Dr. Drati, who's, who's taking the lead on, um, you know, collecting information, contacting families, uh, contacting providers and, uh, making this happen as quickly as possible. Uh, it's a combination of uh, uh, Bertha Ramon, our uh, uh, tech director, ed tech director, and also D Dr. Jacqueline Mora, uh, mm -hmm. assistant school of education. But we are working in conjunction with uh, our, our, our principals to identify who does not have these um, uh, the equipment needed. And um, but in terms of uh, uh, resources outside, such as PTAs and businesses and other people that are, that are going to lend their support where her office is going to help coordinate all that. I mean, I know we're, you know, we're, we're entering the, um, the heart of the period where people should not be in contact. So I don't know also how we're going to, um, you know, make this happen and potentially even be in people's homes to train them um, how to, how to use this stuff when, when we're all supposed to be sheltering in place. Yeah. Uh, the staff has been uh, communicating in meetings through uh, Zoom and Google Hangout. So, so um, just as our meetings are occurring through Zoom, I mean, it's a it's a it's an efficient uh, way of collaborating. So, I think uh, we'll continue to use that uh, to learn and and try to mitigate people come together. Okay, great, thank you. So, Maria. Well, yeah. My my only other comment on this would be that thank you, Dr. Mora, and and to Bertha and everybody in the staff who's really been putting it out there. I've, I've been hearing some good things as I, you know, as I get contacted from parents. And we're trying our best. I think we're trying, and we're putting a situation where it's never happened before and we're, we're move, trying to move forward, you know, in respect to how we're doing at the college. I mean, we're down till the whole semester, till June, June 16th. So a lot of us are bringing a lot of that work home, trying to figure out how we're going to be as useful as possible at home. But my big concern is for those families who, who really have, no, have not been able to communicate or are kind of in the dark, I was wondering whether, I don't want to leave it just on two people, but I really want to bring in all of our, our, our teachers, all of our, all of our you know, certificate staff to come on board with us, our classified staff to come on board and help us communicate with the families. I think, Sarah, if you're on, Sarah, if you're on, on, on this 
on in the meeting, I would really urge all of our teachers, I know they're going to be at home, that if they can put together just an email that they could send out a mass email to their students, you know, in elementary school to the families, in middle school to, to the students, because if they can do group, um, you know, emails to their, like class by class, that, that means they would be doing a general email to everybody and then they could send it out to maybe per class, especially in the middle and the high school. I wonder if that can be done because we're doing that now with all of our students and dual enrollment at the high school. So we're sending out, you know, and we sent out an email today, the first one, just well, letting them know that we're still, we're still here for them, that we haven't let them go. Because I think a lot of, you know, people just need to be reassured that we're here, we're still here for them and we are. I think the problem right? is, I think the problem is that when people are not um, online, they're not getting the emails, they're not getting that. So I know that many teachers are calling and trying to do it that way, but how do we foster learning in those situations? So, right. sorry, that, well, in that case, Sarah, Sarah I, 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 Dr. Moore had already been in the queue okay. to speak. Let's try to allow staff to address this and we will get to your questions later, thank you. I know it's a new format, we're used to jumping in, yeah. I know. No, no, okay. let me just finish, let me just finish off, John. And, I guess okay, kind of in, res in response, I guess, the whole thing is, is I think the teachers are the only ones that know best their students and, and should know the families of those students and the needs. And, and I think they have a pretty good idea. I think by now we're in the almost, three, you know, over half of the, the year, school year, so that they could at least identify and do the list. I agree with Ralph's original question, like once they can identify families of need, then who is going to take that information and run with it to make sure that they get what they need? That's it for me. All right, Dr. Moore, you wanted to respond? Yes, if I may. So okay, thank please. you for, um, you know, all of these are really important questions and I appreciate um, the opportunity to be able to share just how much our staff has been working, our teachers, our administrators, central office leaders, um, our students and our families. Everyone's been, um, working really hard to make this adjustment and to really move forward in a challenging time and innovate and really do everything that they can to reach out to families. I do want to share with, um, with, every, with our community that, and, and with our board members that we do have a survey that has gone out to sixth through 12th grade because initially um, when we developed our distance learning, we really honed in on utilizing the devices that we had available to our students um, from, six, from eighth through 12th in Santa Monica and sixth through 12th in Malibu. Our, at the elementary level, we ended up going with um, a paper pencil format because we, could, we did not have devices for all students. And in Santa Monica, sixth and seventh were a blended model. Since then, we are going to be looking at how we can assess all of the devices that we have in, in our schools and, de and develop a plan of action on how we would be distributing that. We are also currently working on a survey to send out to um, our elementary, elementary families and really leveraging um, our principals and our teachers to get this communication out to families as well. So um, I do want to share with all of you that we are thinking already about that and have and are, and are putting steps in place to get that information out to our principals, our teachers, and our families in order to plan not only short term but long term. What will we do and how will we adjust and iterate um, the plans that we've made um, in the short term and how will we support our teachers in being able to make the necessary adjustments as we think long term and um, incorporate more distance, more digital platform um, in order to provide distance learning opportunities for our students. Um, I don't foresee us fully just not utilizing also the textbooks that students have taken home or books that students have taken. I really see us being able to use a blended model because I know students have their textbooks and resources at home. So really leveraging that as well so that we are taking into account the, the, the importance for students to engage in a different modality beyond just um, digital. So really looking at providing supports to our teachers, um, providing also 
communication to our families because we know this is a huge change and shift, not just for our teachers, but also for our families as they are engaging in supporting the facilitation of learning experiences for our elementary, middle, and high school students. So again, I want to share with all of you, we are moving in that direction. We want to thank our teachers, our principals, and for all of their hard work and our, and our families for um, their, um, their patience, flexibility, and understanding as we, you know, channel this, this new, new way of being um, in this most challenging time. Okay, great. I, I, I do want to take this moment to remind my colleagues that we are now, these are questions for the superintendent based on the superintendent's report. I have Oscar and then I have TJ. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I had um, one question that I had uh, was in terms of layoffs. Um, do we have the ability to rescind layoffs at this point? Um, we have the ability to do a lot of things. Um, uh, so, um, uh, the, the, the layoff process, I think what I'm going to, there's going to be a message coming out to the entire community about the layoff process. And I'll have Mark Keller speak to that in a little bit about the layoff process and just explaining, uh, why every school district, uh, it, 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 it goes through that process is making sure that we align our enrollment to staffing. And, um, uh, so, uh, there's, I know, I realize there's a lot of, uh, information fl uh, uh, flying around out there that might be inaccurate uh, in terms of why we're doing it. So I need to be able to set the record straight of why we're doing it and let people make their minds from there. Uh, but uh, we, we, you as a board has every, every right to make decisions on, on right. some of this. Uh, at one like, point, this, this, it, it is not an agendized topic tonight. So it's not a conversation we can be having in this meeting right now. Um, but I think from what I heard you say, Ben, you will be communicating with all the families of the district in the next couple of days to explain yeah. that process, answer yeah. the frequently asked questions and provide some direction and guidance on how that's actually taking place. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Okay, I, I'm sorry, Oscar, you had another question for Ben? No, I just, and, and just to follow up with that, it would be good for the board to know, uh, you know, as the superintendent just stated that, 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 that the board can, you know, move in, in that direction if, if we wanted to, just to give us some, some information um, because I heard that th that there's other school districts considering that, being that being that it's kind of hard to pull everybody together when people get pink slips, you know. So maybe this is like one of those sort of very difficult, challenging situations where we need to pull the 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 you know our staff together, and uh, and and rescinding layoffs might be a strategy. So I just want information um, so that we would have that just in case if we wanted to go in that direction. Okay. The other, uh, the other question that I had is in terms of the, the, the issue of uh, students in special education, English language learners, and I know we have about 75 students in our district that are experiencing homelessness. And I wanted to know if, the, if there's any special uh, work being done to meet the needs and obligations uh, for those students. So may I, Dr. Trotty? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so we, we are, our special education team under the direction of our director, Deanna Sinfield, has been, has been working diligently to support our students. Our special education teachers created um, um, three weeks worth of materials that were differentiated in order to support our students um, as per their IEP. We are doing everything within, um, within our our within the parameters to support our students with disabilities and provide services um, based on the restrictions and guidelines that um, the health department has delineated. So we are having um, IEPs with families if they are interested in engaging in that through virtual meetings or phone conference or rescheduling in order to make sure that we are honoring those timelines. We have our staff who is working virtually as well to provide um, services for students. Again, we are doing everything as per the guidelines from CDE and 
uh, making adjustments as needed, um, similar to what we are providing our students, our general education students, right? We're providing our special education students with resources to support them in a differentiated man manner that, su that is supported through their IEP goals. Um, in relationship to our English learners, um, our team has been pulling additional supports to provide teachers, um, but they have also been taking that into account when they've developed their lessons and activities for these next three weeks. And again, those will be re refined and um, adjusted based on the on the key learnings that we're experiencing during these couple of these first couple of days and in the coming weeks um, our principals and teachers are having um, zoom meetings virtual meetings to discuss successes and challenges and make adjustments as needed um, in order to iterate and refine the work that's happening um, so that is that's something that we continue to review but i want to share that we are um, doing our very best to provide our students with the with the differentiated learning experience within um, within the guidance and direction of CDE and also the health the health department. So as, as far as uh, as so far sorry. as uh, the students that are in foster youth and, and like that, uh, that's where I think uh, um, I think Maria the Leon Vasquez mentioned about how teachers know who their students are. And we should be able to know who, who's not engaging with us in a curriculum and really putting, uh, putting a, a casting a web out there to identify who those students are and then actively go out and, and find them uh, so we can give them devices and get them engaged. So that's a part of the work that we're gonna be doing throughout the, this week and the next week. Uh, but hopefully by next week, we wanna know who is engaged and who's not engaged and then, and then identify the reason why so we can uh, remedy that. Dr. Moore, you look like you, yeah, Dr. Moore. Yes, I do want to add to build off of what Dr. Drotty and I apologize for not having spoken about this piece. We have been, we've moved forward with purchasing hotspots for families who do not have um, internet access, specifically for families who may be in transition um, homes, which won't be able to have access to any internet that is going to be directly connected to a residence. So please know that we are working closely with our teams um, in order to identify what families would need this, this support um, that may not be able to access any addition, any supports that might be available through, through different um, organizations or companies that are offering free or reduced um, internet access. So we are working on those pieces as well and taking into account the guidance of CDE around what what can what parents what parents are able to do and what our responsibility is as as um, a public education system. So know that we're working through those pieces as well. Thank you Dr. Moore. So Richard has one last thing to say and then we really have to move on with the agenda. TJ, you had something you wanted to yeah, add? Yeah, thank you, John. Um, and I just want to pose this as a, a request for information from the superintendent. And um, Dr. Drotty, I know that your team is doing incredible work. Dr. Mora, thank you. Uh, we are all concerned about student um, equity. And I'm very concerned um, about um, questions of fairness and equity when it comes to the evaluation of our students in secondary schools. Um, particularly um, knowing that Dr. Drotty just kind of like pulled back the curtain a bit and said that there might be an, there might be a, an extension of this remote learning beyond what we had first thought might be just packets and kind of more correspondence um, leading into spring break. So Dr. Drotty, would you please also, as you're doing the good work that you and your staff are doing, be prepared to present to the board uh, some sort of a, a substantive look at how we can ensure student equity in the evaluation process, noting all of those things that have been mentioned by my peers already um, with regards to access, the, the, the internet, uh, just the instruction. And um, I'm really concerned about what evaluation will look like if we are out for the rest of the academic year. And so I think that the, the sooner we board members can understand that Absolutely. and to know um, what kind of actions you're taking. I think it has to be uniform and it needs to be um, with that eye on equity, which I know that is always the lens that you see things through. So if, if that information can be included in our next update too, please. Thank you. So we, just, we just turned a five minute superintendent's report into a 40 minute discussion item, but that's important information. I think where everybody is dealing with 
the uncertainty and the fear and everything that goes with that. And it's, we just want to talk out what we're doing and how we're trying to be active and helpful. And uh, I think everyone needs to recognize that staff is doing 18 jobs at one time. And um, really just they, they are looking out for every student at every opportunity they have right now, trying to keep 11,000 students engaged. And it's just great work going on. <laughs> One last thing. We're, We're going to talk thing. more? We didn't. Oh, for the love of, come yeah. on, Ben. <laughs> Your turn. This, uh, uh, as important as our staff is in this work, it's not just about them only. I think in, in talking to the principals, they have said that, that there, there's also anxiety at the home too, particularly for for elementary parents, uh, parents that have elementary students, they not only have to now help with the instruction at home, uh, uh, they have to do that while providing, um, uh, while providing uh, home care and, uh, and still deal with their, their own work. So, so that stress level that exists out there, we, we recognize it. So we have to be cognizant of that as we, as we go forward. So. Sure, and we should also give you know, a, a huge thank you to all the teachers and classified staff who are already working with kids and setting up chats and following up and making sure the families are okay. Um, I mean, it's the lifeblood of our, our district. So I'm gonna take us now to our consent. Um, uh, do I have a motion for consent? From Motion by Craig, second by mm -hmm. Richard, got there just before Oscar. So motion by Craig, second by uh, Richard. Is there any discussion? Anybody needs to do anything from this? Ralph? Yeah, just, um... Item five, the general consent item to the revision, revision to uh, the use of school facilities. The, um, that item is paired, I guess, with the, inf the where is it paired? With, um, there's, an infor there's an information, information item. Inf information we are going, when we get to the information item, we're gonna ask for that to be reviewed and, and, and addressed okay. in the future. No, so just wait till then. Well, for the information, and yeah, that's that's a separate. I asked your question. That's a separate issue from the the, the BP right. uh, consent. Okay. Well, normally when something's an information item, we don't address it. It's just there for our information. But when we get there, we're we're going to give staff direction to take this information item and update it, please. I mean okay. the uh, the AR and update it. Great. Thank you. Uh, at least that's what Sarah tells me to do. <laughs> All right, so we have, a, we have a, a motion and a second for consent. We'll do a roll call vote. This is gonna be in the order that I see you in. Richard. Yes. Craig. Craig. Craig gave me a thumbs up, yes. Lori. Yes. Ralph. Yes. Oscar. That's a thumbs up. Maria. Yes. And I am a yes. Is that everybody? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is everybody. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I also see Kimia. Yeah. Kimia shook her head, thumbs up, yes. And I see Mia. Mia? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. We're learning. We're all learning. Okay. This now takes, so now it brings us to information item. There is one item for information, <laughs> and we are directing staff to take this AR and I'm not gonna make a country music song out of it, but take this AR and please let's update this and make it a little more appropriate for what we're doing with our, our, our facilities right now. Now, the next interesting part of tonight, which brings us to general public- hey, John, just sorry, is there a, a time that when that's gonna happen? Are we saying 30 days? Honestly, with, with everything happening right now, it's so much all hands on deck, getting kids settled with what's happening. Right. Um, I, Sarah just gave me a, we'll do what we can do. Yeah, I mean, there are no, unfortunately, no permit issue, permits being issued. We don't have to worry about permits for a while. Yeah. Not an issue. Yeah, okay, so now it brings us to the next. Some of the will need more direction than just update. So whoever has an idea about that, please contact me. Sure, absolutely, Carrie. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Yeah, it'll be fairly, fairly clear. Um, general public comment. This is another step in learning how we're gonna go into this brave new world. We, the board had asked and communicated with families, if you have a public comment, please submit it through an online link, and then we would read the public comment into the record for you. Um, the unintended consequence of this is that the number of public comments skyrockets because you no longer have to come to a meeting to give a public comment. It's very easy to write your thoughts, which is wonderful in terms of 
uh, public participation, but it also has concerns with, with meeting. So what we're gonna try to do tonight is that Sarah Warrenbrock and I will take about, she'll do 10, then I'll do 10, and we're gonna keep going back and forth, trying to read all these public comments into the record. All comments will automatically become part of our record um, after we post everything. So everything will be posted um, appropriately. Because of the large number, we're going to try to do one minute for each comment, and we will read hopefully quick enough to get through all these comments. And Sarah Braff, no, I will not forget you. Don't worry. So um, we should, I guess we don't have to worry about, well, Lori, do you want to give them the, the, the spiel before the comments? Or is that not needed? Well, I don't think it's particularly needed since no one can clap or do anything really. And we, I, I guess I'll just say that as is always the case when we hear public comments, which are not on, um, on a particular topic that's agendized, uh, we cannot ask any questions other than clarifying questions and we can't get in any extended discussion. And actually, since there's no one to even ask clarifying questions of, or get into any kind of discussion with, that really won't be an issue. But please understand that we cannot, the bottom line is we cannot act on anything that is in any of these questions because it's not agendized. The only thing we can do if we choose to is um, ask the superintendent to look into them or to do something about a particular issue. Great, so I'm gonna have Sarah begin the process and then I will do the handoff from her. And I'll be, my cell phone is up. So I'm setting a timer for one minute for each one. Let me bring them up. And then Vanina, I know you can hear me. Uh, when we get to the one that's in Spanish, I will unmute um, the microphone. Okay, uh, first one. Taj Ford. Hi, my name is Taj Ford. I'm in Ms. Ro Mr. Ross's freshman honors English class. I was saddened to hear that Mr. Ross was not invited to come back to Samo High next year. I think it is a great loss to the freshman English program of Samo High. Out of all the English teachers I've had over the years, Mr. Ross has stood out as the best. He has taught me and many others important English skills from comprehensive literary analysis to persuasive writing. Not only is Mr. Ross a great teacher, he's also a great person. He brings a fun energy to the classroom, allowing us to not only learn, but have a great time while doing it. Please invite Mr. Ross back to teach at Samo High. Thank you. Uh, next one is Kai Ford. In my two years at Samo High, I've had a lot of different teachers. There have been some good teachers and bad teachers, and one of the teachers that has, was pink slipped was an amazing teacher. Mr. Kohler was my ninth grade honors English teacher, and he was great. The thing that made him so great was that he cared about his kids and their education at Samo High. I've had a pretty, some pretty bad teachers, ones that just don't care about our educators. Mr. Kohler is different. He not only is a nice guy, but he teaches very well. When we were reading Shakespeare last year, I found it extremely boring at first, but Mr. Kohler made it fun and interesting. So I urge the members of the board to rethink the way teachers are chosen to be cut. Don't just look at statistics, look at the person who really cares. Um, let's see, hold on, text message, stop. Uh, next one is Laura Ford. Hi, I'm Laura Ford. I'm here on behalf of the English teachers, Kyler, Kyle Kohler and Justin Ross. I'd like to respectfully ask the board to save these teachers jobs and keep these highly trained, talented and passionate educators at Samo High. Mr. Kohler and Kai's favorite was Kai's favorite teacher last year. Mr. Ross is Taj's favorite English teacher ever. Mr. Kohler taught Kai critical and creative thinking and creative writing and thinking skills that deeply enhance every class Kai takes. Mr. Ross teaches ta Taj sophisticated analytical thinking and persuasive writing skills that he will use in high school, college and beyond. In this 21st century, what is more important than to learn how to think and write? It's how we communicate every day. Mr. Kohler and Mr. Ross teach with skill, enthusiasm, and passion. Their hearts are with the public school system, the population it serves, and the community it improves. Their dedication and compassion is genuine and infectious. Our kids need Mr. Kohler and Mr. Ross at Samuel High. Board members, please keep Mr. Ross at Samuel High. Uh, both of them are great. Thank you. Uh, from Sarah Tropia. Tropia. I'm writing on behalf of my daughter, Scarlett's exceptionally talented freshman honors uh, English teacher, Mr. Kyle Kohler. When she found out Mr. Kohler received a pink slip, she was so upset saying, but he's my favorite teacher. Scarlett has an incredible year in, has had an incredible year in his class. She's been taught to write, to think, and to devour the written word. We saw this in action with Mr. Kohler's projects in connection with Sandra Cisneros, The House on Mongo Street. Scarlett loved this book and the discussions with Mr. Kohler led to, into issues of race, gender, socioeconomic status, identity, and other topics. Mr. Kohler challenged the class to write their own vignettes in the style of Sanders Cisneros. 
Because of Mr. Kohler's inspiring, passionate, and fun teachings, Scarlett dug into his, this project. We watched as he spent hours writing her own vignettes about global warming, changing relationships, the pressure on Generation Z to fit into the world, family, and high school labels, and childhood memories. Scarlett became a poet in Mr. Kohler's class and continues to write poetry just because. Mr. Kohler's talents are incredibly valued for Samuel High. Keep him. Uh, from Hannah De La Rosa, Mrs. Valen Valentiner Merlot, sorry, became my teacher when I went to sixth grade at Jams. I remember learning about ancient Greece through a project she created. Every table in the class was represented by a Greek god and we had to learn everything about it. During this project, Mr. Valen Valentiner set up uh, Olympic games, plays, and we made an ancient Greek temple for each god. It was the most I've learned and the most fun I've ever had. How many teachers would do all of this to ensure that we truly learn a subject? Not many. Clearly, Mrs. V is just that type of teacher that we need more of. I'm a sophomore now and she was absolutely my favorite teacher. She takes care of us and loves us as if we were her own children. Her passion to empower us with knowledge is unlike any other teacher. Also, she creates a sense of family in her class. As soon as I walk in, I feel welcome and love. Uh, having a teacher like that makes a huge difference in my day. Additionally, she's the only teacher who's believed in me ever since I was 12 and has helped me through hard times. She has taught us much more than history. I truly look up to her and love her. Please don't take her away from us. Okay. Next one is from uh, Kayla Lewis Corey, who I think also sent a YouTube video via email, it looks like, to you. Dear Board of Education, my name is Kayla Lewis Corey, and I'm a junior at Santa Monica High School. I've had the privilege of being taught by some truly amazing teachers throughout my journey through Grant, Jams, and now Samuel High. I emailed you a video with a photo that was taken in the summer of 2010 during our Save Our Schools campaign when I was so scared that I might lose our, my favorite teacher at the time. Many of us students spend our entire summer selling lemonade to make enough money to keep our teachers' jobs. Fast forward to today, and we are again in a similar place, worried that some of our best and most inspirational teachers who have received pink slips may not be teaching at our schools. Kyle Kohler is one of the most inspirational, positive, funny, well-respected, and alike teachers I've ever had. It would be such a disservice to our entire community to let him go. I've heard the same of other teachers and bilingual community liaisons who also received pink slips. Why can't teachers who are tired of teaching or who are mean or rude to students or who have low passing rates be let go? Why does it have to be the good ones? My parents have explained this is the way it is because there's a law in place to prevent letting go of teachers who have been teaching longer. Can we change that law because it's a, a faulty law that hurts students, our schools, and some really amazing teachers? Until we change the law, can we work together to find a way to keep the best teachers? Even if it means cutting the budget elsewhere or giving up some, my summer to sell lemonade, my friends and I are all in. Thank you for listening. Uh, Rachel Chow. Dear respected uh, members of the Board of Education, I write to you as a parent of children enrolled at Essen Language Academy. We have learned in the school district's intention to lay off bilingual community liaisons throughout the district in favor of three liaisons, one of whom would serve four or more schools in our area, including Edison. This proposal is so shocking to our schools, to our school and so inequitable that I am compelled to request respectfully that you vote against the laying off of Edison's bilingual community liaison. As you know, Edison is a language academy. We strive to have 50% of our students from Spanish-speaking families and 50% from English-speaking families. Of those Spanish-speaking families, 30% of Edison families speak only Spanish at home. In addition, as a Title I school, 42% of our families, 42% of our families are at, at poverty line or below. While you are probably familiar with these facts, I hope to share with you just how important our community liaison is to our unique school and how inequitable it would be to lose a full-time bilingual community liaison on our bilingual campus. Ms. Gutierrez is an indispensable component of our children's education at Edison. She translates and interprets outgoing and incoming communications, including communications from the district that are not in Spanish. She acts as the right-hand principal to person to Principal Orem, who operates the school without an assistant principal. Ms. Gutierrez is on campus every day to meet the needs of all families and children who require language assistance, assistance regarding the complicated, well, sorry, okay, that was one minute. Okay, okay. So that, that went on for another uh, paragraph. Um, and now it's John's turn. Wonderful, thank you, Sarah. So from Scarlett Trapea Lester, dear board members, I am writing to in support of the best teacher I have ever had, Mr. Kohler. He is truly a phenomenal educator and has helped me discover my passion for creative writing. He is a lively and kind teacher that would be deeply missed by many if you let him go. Many students, including my younger brother, will lose out if he is not kept on as a teacher. He has helped many students with the transition from middle school to high school and remains their favorite teacher. Please consider keeping him and have a good evening. Um, next one is from Amber Jane. Edison is different. Edison serves a high number of underprivileged families. Edison maintains a high level of academics. Edison should not have the same rules as other schools. We need to keep Yoli and we need to keep permits. Let us do things differently 
as we are a different type of school that is actually helping to bridge the academic gap. And we have from Noel Lewis. There was no text in the comment, <laughs> I'm reading what Sarah wrote here. There was no text in the comment field, but her topic field read bilingual community liaison discussion. So she wanted to speak on that topic. Our next comment is by Sarah Barrett. I'm Sarah Barrett. I've been a Samo High junior and a Lincoln. I have a Samo High junior and a Lincoln eighth grader. We moved to this district three years ago for better education. The past three years have been life changing for my girls, not only because of the incredible music programs that SMMUSD offers, but because they have both had some incredible teachers who have given their time and shared their passion for subjects and helped bring out the love of learning in my kids. One of those teachers is Maggie Colburn. Emily has her class right now. She pushed herself and made extra efforts to have Ms. Colburn as a teacher. Emily is her AM class, and you must know that if a kid is willing to take an AM just to have that teacher, that teacher must be something special. My daughter's education is very important to them. The idea that Charlotte will start Samuel High next year and not be able to benefit from some of the incredible teachers Emily has had is disappointing and upsetting. Maggie Colburn is tenured and has given so much to this district. She has an 80% pass rate for students in APUSH, has incorporated PBL in her classes as well. Why wouldn't you want to give Samuel High students the most opportunities to succeed? I'm also writing on behalf of Gavin Wallace, one of our very best PE teachers at Lincoln Middle School. My daughter has learned about teamwork, standing up for herself, and more importantly, standing up for others. Um, that is over a minute. There's another paragraph here if you'd like to go online and read that. It is about the rules that Ms. Wallace uses in her PE class. Our next speaker is Jackson Lerner. The immersion program has been an absolute blessing to me. It has offered me so many friends and has allowed me to know so many people coming from so many places and different backgrounds. Um, it put an incredible diversity into my life and a new perspective many other students do not have. I have had so many incredible teachers in this program that love teaching kids language and that have been just phenomenal in their teachings and their passion. It saddens me that so many people are getting cut who care so much and put so much passion into their jobs. There's nothing that saddens me more than to have to bid these teachers farewell when a normal sized class of students needs seven teachers and isn't even going revenue neutral. Okay, uh, and our next comment is from Jeremy Alcock. Um, my name is Jeremy Alcock. I am here on behalf of the English teacher, Kyle Kohler, the drawing art teacher, Jessica Sanseri, and the freshman seminar, Katerina Merlo. I would like to ask the board to save these teachers jobs. They're very skilled teachers that are passionate and care about our children's educational needs on a daily basis. These teachers put our children before anything else. My daughter, Mabel, has continually spoken out about Mr. Kohler and his passion for the written word. He has inspired my daughter to read in a world of screens. She now reads and writes more than ever. He also was way ahead of the online learning curve and prepared students for the days before Samo closed due to COVID-19. He is a gem of a teacher. Sanseri has influenced my daughter with her creativity in many ways. She guided her with the AP art portfolio process. She is also expecting a newborn within months. Katerina Merlob is an excellent freshman seminar teacher. She inspired my daughter to get into politics when she always hated it. Merlob has taught her to debate and challenge her skills and knowledge by learning more about the government and community she lives in. Our next comment is Julie Jones. Dear Board of Education, Dr. Drotty, I've been working for SMMUSD for 20 years, and 14 of those years have been with Lisa Lambert, our PE coach slash teacher. I'm asking you to reconsider letting her go while adding district level positions and paying for outside consultancy fees. You will be getting rid of our only female coach at our school, and that will be unfair to our students. Our female students deserve to have a female coach. Our male students benefit from seeing strong female coaches. I don't see how we can consider ourselves equitable or, or socially just if she is let go. Furthermore, Ms. Lambert has taught many other classes and gone above and beyond each time she's done so. She's taught ASB and built character and student leadership in our middle schoolers. She's taught freshman seminar, this year, she is helping students find success as the teacher of academic tutoring for students in grades six through eight. Ms. Lambert has built relationships with students and their families that have helped her students find success in many ways. She should not be let go, and to do so will send the wrong message to our community. Next message for comment from Deborah. Graduation for seniors 2020. Will this event still take place? If not, when or where can it take place? Prom for seniors. How will this affect this event? When, where? Can this be postponed or put on at a later date? If so, how? Our next comment is Dylan Walker. Mr. Sigmund shouldn't be fired. It's his first year and he's head coach of the baseball program and honestly has improved my skill and not just sports, 
but also maturity and responsibility. Our next comment is Harpreet Chu. Hello, I would respectfully ask the board to save Ms. Colburn's job. My elder daughter, who is now in college, and my junior both had Ms. Colburn for A-Push, and they loved her. She's extremely hardworking, passionate, and talented. She makes the class interesting. Our children need Ms. Colburn. Please keep Ms. Colburn and the other great teachers at SAMO. These are tough times with a world health crisis. Pink slip teachers will be unable to search for or procure new jobs during this pandemic. Some may have partners who have already lost their income. All of our teachers are stepping up in a huge way to keep the curriculum moving forward as best they can during an unprecedented solution. Please save our teachers who are the core of educating our children. Thank you. And then the last one that I'm gonna read right now is from Theo Tobel. I have had the pleasure of having Coach Sigmund as head of the baseball program at Samo High. I'm currently a freshman, but I've already seen how much he has improved the program by doing many fundraisers. He's the best coach I've ever had because he understands baseball so well, and he is a great teacher who can make hard objectives easy. I've also heard from numerable friends that he is a very good math teacher. Overall, he is a great guy, coach, and teacher. It would be a shame if he were fired for he only wants to make each of us better players and human beings. The next person is Valerie. Can you hear me? Am I on? Yep. Okay. The next person is uh, Valerie Gonzalez. Mrs. Valentiner has recently received a pink slip. I graduated in 2015, but I had him for two years, seventh and eighth grade. Mrs. Valentiner moved me as well as challenged me. Everything she that she's taught me. I've always kept in my mind. Some of the things she taught even stuck with me in college. She's an awesome immersion teacher and she is the glue that will keep the immersion program going. The immersion program is a family, a family that keeps you going when you don't think you can go through anything more. The immersion program, guests including Mrs. Valentiner, is the reason I'm going to school to teach. Next is Cameron Moses. Hi, my name is Cameron Moses, and I'm a former student of Edison Elementary School, John Owens Middle School, and Santa Monica High School. I was once in the immersion program. The entire time and I really hate to see it go after the experience I had in it. The immersion program, which there are a few, a few of, is the only program in place that can help people who need a more extensive learning in the Spanish language. Typical Spanish classes are not taught enough for people like myself and my peers who have been speaking the language for so long. It was an important part of my schooling and will be an important part of schooling for the future kids to participate in the program. It isn't the main reason, reason I can say that I speak fluent uh, Spanish to this day. As regards in regards to the pink slip on Mrs. Valentiner, she was by far one of the best teachers I ever had, not just in the immersion program, but in my schooling as a whole. Fight, firing her would be a serious mistake, and then Santa Monica school system would lose a valuable teacher. She was respected by her students and knew how to teach a class and keep the children in line. She's a teacher who developed lasting relationships with her students. I would hope that you would not make hasty decisions with all that's going on, even with the lack of school funds. Our education for our youth should be taken very seriously, even though I realize that certain bills have not been passed preventing funds from going to the schools. Regardless, certain programs and teachers should not be cut. Okay, that was one minute. Next person is Jackie Stansbury. Regarding the pandemic and our teaching, or re, her topic is regarding the pandemic and our teaching staff. It would be unconscionable to follow through with plans to pink slip teachers during a world health crisis. Our city and district must prioritize caring for community members. Pink slip teachers will be unable to search for or procure new jobs during this pandemic. Some may have partners who have already lost their income. All of our teachers are stepping up in a huge way to keep the curriculum moving forward as best they can during an unprecedented situation. Firing teachers are a great source of stress for parents and students. The school board must draw upon emergency funds, cancel frivolous projects, parentheses, PBL high school, parentheses, or find places to cut elsewhere. All of our SMMUST teachers should know that they have employment at the very least for the 2021 school year. Post pandemic, parents and students should not have to face the 2021 school year with a shortage of teachers and our non-English families should be able to continue to count on the support of community bilingual liaisons and excellent emerging teachers. From Storm DeBarge, we have, hello, I'm here to leave a comment about the Emerging Program. I entered the Emerging Program when I was in preschool at Edison all the way until I graduated high school in 2015. It's the best thing I've ever, I ever did in my life. Cutting the Emerging Program would hurt a lot of people. Also cutting my middle school teacher from Samo High is the only Emerging teacher there isn't fair. She is really a great teacher and has helped myself along with my other classmates. We all have learned so much and we still use our Spanish. From Cynthia Bugosh Hill. Uh, we were very fortunate indeed to get our child enrolled in the immersion program from a kindergarten at Edison Middle School at Jams through 10th grade at Samo High. 
Our data Catalina has a huge family in Argentina who benefited from this program because she was able to communicate with them all her life since she was immersed in Spanish, the culture of this wonderful program. Ms. Valentina is, Valentina is particular, in particular, changed the course of our daughter's life because she was one of those teachers that all kids loved and respected. Despite the large classroom size, she was able to charm those kids with her profound care for each and every one of them. If you ask any of our emerging kids who their favorite teacher was, she is no doubt at the top of the list. Please do not lose this treasure. She really cares about the future and shows it through her actions every day. This would be a real great, a real tragedy to fire her and dismantle this program. From Vincent Bernoda. As day-to-day -day substitute teachers, we help SMMUSC students receive a quality school day in the absence of their regular teacher. Our resilient substitute teachers are in a quandary as our jobs are canceled and our services are no longer required during this unprecedented crisis. Please consider this problem as a unique opportunity to demonstrate national leadership and forward thinking to provide your, for your substitute teachers. 20 substitutes work 120 days a year and 30 more work at least 100 days a year. This is a whole school of educators that are ready at a moment's notice when you need us. Since the money is already in the budget for this time period, can we allocate and apportion some of these, fun these funds on a pro proportional basis? Please support the substitute teachers who support our students and teachers. Uh, he says, as a note, we worked four years as a classified substitute, 20 years as a certificate substitute teacher. I've worked almost every day in every classroom and every school. I admire and respect the phenomenal job teachers do. Can we support our guest teachers too? From Catalina Bulgach, we have Senora Valentina was an excellent teacher. She was determined to deliver an amazing class every day and be there for us in any other way we needed her. No matter how loud and a focus the students may have been, by the time Senora Valentina entered the class, she had a smile on her face. She truly loved us and loved being a part of our family. I remember Senora Ventila taking any opportunity she could to help out during social gatherings and meetings. She reached out to connect to all of our families. From the minute we met her, she had all the respect and adoration from every student in the immersion program. What Senora Valentina and the immersion programs mm -hmm. at SMUSD did was to teach us Spanish, several subjects in Spanish, the importance of culture and heritage and familia. With our diverse backgrounds, we could complicate what we meant Mm -hmm. communicate. Well, we don't, and to know Spanish or be Hispanic. That was not one definitive image that may be dictated by media or other institutions. This program and Senora Valentina went beyond any expectations to carry us into the next chapters of our life. I have nothing but love for my teacher and the emerging program. Do not let the her the program go. From Maya Zander, please consider your decision to allow some PE teachers to skip ahead in the seniority list if they are also coaches. Our only female PE teacher at the Malibu Middle School school, Lisa Lambert, is currently on the pink slip list, even though she has greater seniority than some of the PE teachers who are not being pink slipped. Not only is this unfair to Ms. Lambert, but it does not, but it does a significant disservice to our middle school girls in Malibu who would be left without a female teacher in their locker room. Ms. Lambert is also a phenomenal resource to our students beyond PE. She has been instrumental in helping student, struggling students improve their grades to mentoring and her support and intervention classes. Please reconsider your decision on this matter. Thank you. Elena Chico is the last one I'll read and then we'll bring it back over to John. Being second generation to be born in the US, I've always felt distant from my culture. Because of my immersion teachers, that distance faded away. Being bilingual has given me an advantage over other applicants and has opened doors to better internships and employment opportunities. I'm also blessed to engage in meaningful and personal conversations with one of the most important people in my life, my grandmother. In these pre precious exchanges, I learned about past traditions, holidays, recipes, and stories from her past. I am able to sit with her and watch her novelas and news, and then discuss with her on what we watched. Unfortunately, this bond I have with her is not the same for the rest of my family. For those who did not have the opportunity to learn Spanish, the conversation is short and usually requires translation. For this reason, I am eternally grateful to the Immersion Program. Lastly, to Ms. Valentina, <coughs> who has always ensured that all students didn't just know the information, but understood, thank you for everything. I'm sorry the district has not noticed your true worth. Okay, so now I will read the first one that, I'm sorry, because I'm adding one here. I am gonna read this first one from Ms. Sarah Braff, our CTA president. Um, am I coming through okay? Anyone? Yep, sound good. Great, thank you. I wanna thank the board and the entire staff for all their hard work during this extraordinary time. It took endless hours and dedication and collaboration at a time of uncertainty and I'm grateful for all we have done together. RIS pink slips. While we understand the need to use the staffing formula and that it was not the board's intent, however, the need to RIF more than 50 teachers is unnecessary given the current crisis. We have put teachers and their families unnecessarily in a stressful, vulnerable, and insecure position. They do not deserve this. We look forward to having these, um, we look forward to having 
most of these notices to uh, rescind it as soon as possible. Skipping, <coughs> excuse me. At times the use of skipping is appropriate. We understand the need for trained bilingual and special education teachers, but many teachers are well-versed in project-based learning, blended learning, coaching, Columbia re reading and writing workshop, social emotional learning, restorative justice, unconscious bias, et cetera. They should have the ability to take positions they are eminently qualified for without being skipped over. Substitutes. We have left our level one and level two subs stranded perhaps for months. While they may apply for unemployment, it will not be enough to sustain them if schools are closed through the end of the school year. We ask the district take the average working week for subs and pay half to provide relief. Long distance learning. Teachers and staff continue to refine instruction and are working together to develop common goals across subjects, grade levels, and sites. Recommendations for budget. We recommend the following be instituted for the length of the budget crisis up through 21-22 if needed. Cease hiring or extending administrative positions. Pause all non-state required professional development. Restrict, eliminate travel and conferences. Our next comment is from Danielle Murawski. First, I hope you all are safe and healthy during this time of unrest. However, my letter is in regards to the reduction in workforce, no, uh, reduction in force notices that were distributed to certificated employees. I urge you to reconsider some financial aspects of our district and rescind the RIFs. To best serve our students, cuts should occur as far from the classroom as possible. The cost of professional development, consultants, additional pathway directors and travel are not needed right now. Also, the cost of operating the PPBL school for a small percentage of our students is doing the district a huge disservice, especially in a time of financial distress. Our goal in education is to help kids be their best emotionally, academically, and physically. We need teachers at our schools to be in classrooms and on campuses to run programs for our students. Cutting teachers is not what is best for kids. I also ask you do not skip seniority. We work hard to attain tenure status. It is extremely upsetting that teachers who have been loyal to SMMUSD for many years have received a pink slip so that the district can skip a teacher who is newer to the district. It is unfair, unjust, and wrong. Our next comment is from Stephanie Tovar. My name is Stephanie Tovar. I work full-time between two school sites as both a librarian at Samo High and Spanish reading interventionist, interventionist at Edison Language Academy, the latter of which I'm to be laid off. At Edison, I work every morning with 23 second and third grade students who have been identified as reading below grade level. I have planned, developed, and implemented curriculum that has accelerated students toward their grade level proficiency levels through meaningful and effective small group instruction. Students have graduated from my services, others have skipped reading levels, and all have demonstrated significant reading progress toward grade level proficiency. Parents have reported my students' shifting attitude towards reading as they feel more empowered by the skills and strategies they've acquired, making them more likely to read independently when they're not in a classroom setting. Spanish reading proficiency allows students to read, write, and understand English more successfully. The benefits of providing intervention services to our Edison students is overwhelming, and eliminating the reading position will hurt my immersion students and our learning community. Our next comment is from Ernesto Cernas. My name is Ernesto Cernas. I am now 22 years old and a graduate of University of California, Santa Barbara, with a Bachelor of Science in Biology. I'm a product of the immersion program, stemming back to elementary school, Ms. Merlob, formerly Ms. Valentina, was the most influential teacher in my academic career prior to college. Her passion for teaching and her caring nature is a quality that must be rewarded. We know now more than ever how important our teachers are, and this extends to teachers who not only teach in one language, but in two. She is completely and selflessly invested in each and every one of her students, ensuring that each kid has an opportunity to grow and achieve academic success. I believe Ms. Merlob exemplifies qualities that the SMM USD district would greatly benefit from, and I plead that the board and district reconsider parting ways with her. I believe the district can find other teachers who have been newly hired for a pilot program without previously being at Samo High, uh, the district, and part ways with them rather than an established teacher such as Ms. Merlot. She has shown time and time again her commitment to her students. Thank you. Uh, next comment from Moses Nicholas. From the moment Ms. Francisco Flores started teaching the class, what inductive and deductive reasoning was, she explained everything with such a detailed enthusiasm that I understood it. I later asked her what any of this means and how will I be able to do well in the future. She told me that I could see her during lunch uh, on Wednesdays, and this was before flex time had started. As I spent more time in her class, I've learned that she wants every one of her students to thrive. I've seen this 
with even kids who drive her nuts and constantly press her with questions. She still keeps on a happy face and answers to her fullest ability. I would feel helpless in math if you were to fire her. Knowing math is only going to get more difficult throughout the years, I would want someone like Miss Francisco Flores to help me out along the way. She's a great teacher and is someone who will always help you, no matter how old the assignment may be. Please reconsider letting go of my teacher. She is a great teacher. Uh, next comment from Emily Colon. I am writing to urge the board to reconsider the termination of Mrs. Valentiner in hopes to help you understand the negative impact this would have on the immersion program. Mrs. Valentiner was my school teacher for social studies at John Adams Middle School for seventh and eighth grade. She pushed us to succeed academically, teaching us about the injustices people have faced and reminding us that this, is, this world is ours to change. She was inspiring inside and outside the classroom, often standing up for other teachers when the students acted disrespectfully, setting an example for us to do the same. We all had profound respect for Mrs. Valentiner. Her termination would be a profound loss for the immersion program. It is rare to find a space created for adolescent youth that actively celebrates other cultures and provides a bilingual education. We call ourselves the immersion family because that is exactly the level of care that each student, teacher, and administrator provides. And Mrs. Valentiner is no exception. I urge you to reflect on the significance of this space and impact that Mrs. Valentiner has on shaping our youth to be kind, responsible, and empowered young adults. Jamar Harvey. Hello, everyone. I have known Mrs. Valentiner since my seventh grade year in 07 as a teacher, leader, counselor, and just a strong individual. From my experience, Ms. Valentiner has always been dedicated to teaching, consistently shows empathy for her students. She's kind, patient, and has great energy. Growing up in the emergency program was not easy, especially when Spanish is your second language. It took me longer than others to grasp certain terms and subjects. She never once showed impatience and always encouraged me to do my best. All my experiences in her immersion program classes were enjoyable, and I have built bonds with people for life because of it. I'm forever grateful to the program. I just want to make sure immersion students and students in general get the same experience. Next comments from Cynthia Cadena. Mrs. Valentiner embodies the epitome of an outstanding teacher, one that expires and, and one that inspires and is never forgotten. Her dedication and commitment to students has made an impact on the individual lives of her students as well as the SMM USD community. My interest in politics peaked in her class, which led to my taking history and politics courses throughout my high school and college academic career. The immersion program is an essential part of our education system. As participants of this program, students' Spanish translation and interpretation skills are heightened and their sense of cross-cultural understanding and cultural sensitivity is developed and enhanced. These skills are vital for successfully navigating through the workforce as well as essential for everyday interactions. I can honestly say that without the program, including the wonderful Mrs. Valentiner, I would not be where I am now. Please consider your decision regarding Mrs. Valentiner's employment, as well as the immersion program as a whole. Save money should never be valued more than the education of our future generation, because in the end, it is the future generation who we must always invest in. Jennifer Valadares, inter-district permits should not be discontinued. Please see my letter sent by email to Dr. Drotty. Uh, next comment, Tasha Buccioni. I'm writing today to implore you to reconsider laying off the site-based bilingual community liaisons. A few years ago, a student came to JAMS after fleeing violence in Central America. Ms. Nancy Gutierrez, the BLC at JAMS, helped them access services they desperately needed, including legal help so they could apply for asylum, mental health services for the entire family, and help finding jobs through Chrysalis. She helped them apply for housing, connected them with food pantries, helped them get bus tokens, adult English classes for the parents, donations of school supplies and clothes. She helped find scholarships for a soccer club in Santa Monica and facilitated the transition to San High by connecting with the community liaison there. She actively advocated for them every single time it was needed. Her compassionate and tireless service made, me incredibly, made an incredibly difficult period of their lives so much easier. They say that the true measure of society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. The true measure of SMMUSD will be determined by how we support our ELs. Please don't abandon them by laying off the employees who support them most. Sarah? Oh, yes, and I'm, okay. Um, so Vanina is um, our lead translator. We'll read, uh, we have one bilingual, I'm sorry, one comment was submitted in Spanish. So she'll read the Spanish first and then she will read the English and I will give it um, two minutes. 
Oh, wait, I probably should unmute her. Hold on, sorry. Oh, I can't get it to open. Come on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. I will read this comment uh, first in, in Spanish and then in English. And this comment comes from Claudia Garcia. Señores, con todo respeto, les pido que por favor piensen un poco más sobre este tema. Yo sé que es fácil olvidar lo importante que es tener a los profesores y a las uh, community liaisons. En estos momentos tan difíciles para todo el mundo, pero la verdad es que me preocupa mucho el impacto que esto tendría en el futuro de nuestros hijos. Ya de por sí tenemos la máxima capacidad en cada salón y el despido de buenos profesores que mantienen a nuestros hijos motivados en el estudio se me hace muy absurdo. En cuanto a las uh, community liaisons, ellas, ellos, son el puente que conectan nuestros padres de habla hispana con la escuela. Gran parte de mi conocimiento y mi participación en esta comunidad tan maravillosa se la debo a ella. Primero por medio de Florencia Rams y ahora por medio de la fabulosa Nancy Gutiérrez. Yo sé que tal vez no vaya a ser la única mamá que puede decirles lo importante que ha sido siempre tener el apoyo de estas personas. Siempre que he necesitado ayuda, ellas me lo han podido brindar. A veces es muy difícil tener que comunicarse con los profesores y directores de la escuela, pero en ellas he encontrado el apoyo que he necesitado. Gracias por su atención. Gentlemen, with all due respect, I please ask you to give this matter more thought. I know it is not easy to forget the importance of having our teachers and the community liaisons during these difficult times for the whole world. But honestly, what worries, uh, worries me very much is the impact that this will have in our children's future. We are already at the maximum capacity in each classroom and releasing good teachers that keep our children motivated to study seems very absurd. Regarding the community liaisons, they are the bridge connecting our Spanish speaking parents with the schools. A great portion of my knowledge and participation within the, this wonderful community, it is because of them. First through Florencia Rams and now through the fabulous Nancy Gutierrez. I know that perhaps I am not the only mom that can tell you how important it has always been to have their support. Every time I needed help, they were able to help me. Sometimes it is very difficult to communicate with the teachers and principals of the school, but I have found in them the support I needed. Thank you for your attention. Okay, and let's see. Thank you, Vanina. You're welcome. Um, the next one is from Jennifer um, Valadares. I oppose layoffs of bilingual community liaisons throughout the district. This would be detrimental and catastrophic to our school. And from Alexis Nigel, I oppose the proposal to lay off bilingual community liaisons throughout the district in favor of three liaisons. From Jasmine Gigusis, uh, I oppose discontinuation of inter-district permits. And our last public comment is from Steve Cannell. At the 3520 board meeting, the board heard information about an item which would increase the work year for six ed services administrators an annual cost of $85,000. Why is the district increasing the work year of administrators while laying off teachers? $85,000 is a teacher. The optics of increasing some people's work years and salaries while telling others their jobs are eliminated is incredibly awful. How can the board tell some employees, we have no money for you, but we have enough money to pay people who already make more than you, even more each year? Laying off teachers to increase administrators' work years isn't defensible ever. This is the very definition of making cuts at the classroom level and then distributing those savings as far away from the classroom as possible. No one should have to point this out to the district, but apparently the district and board need reminders that if cuts are needed, they should be as far away from the classroom as possible, not at the classroom level so the administration can grow. That concludes the public comments. Great, thank you very much, Sarah, and I appreciate you reading the lion's share of those. Um, this is a new, a new, new world for us, and we will have to figure out the best ways to, to uh, encourage public participation in our meetings remotely. Uh, which brings us to our information item. We mentioned that we have one information item that I will be uh, discussing with Carrie, I guess, when we things settle down a little bit. It's a revision to AR uh, 1330, 
it needs to be further re revised and we can do that when things mellow out a little bit. I think Ralph can maybe help out with that as well. I would appreciate it. Sure. Um, we've handed our public comments. Actually, I went out of order, forgive me. Um, board member items. I don't know if we have any board member items. Do we have any, we don't, do we have any board member comments? Um, seeing none, I move us to future agenda items. Seeing none, I will call for adjournment because I do know that our staff has been working 16 to 18 hour days and I really appreciate them being able to get this meeting together. It took a lot of effort to get to this. Um, just great admiration for all of you guys and thank you so much. Um, we have one comment for Richard then we close. Or is that just agreeing? That was to move to adjourn. And move to adjourn by Richard, seconded by Craig. All in favor? Let's, we are already home, so let's continue to be home. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Stay healthy. Yeah.